Good evening, everybody. Thanks for showing up late in the day. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, am I supposed to just move on this? <laughs> okay, it'll be tough. So, uh, okay, anyways, the name of the topic is uh, The Tale of 100 CVEs. And my name is Prajal Kulkarni. And uh, so many people ask me outside, so what the title looks very funny. Why The Tale of 100 CVEs? So you guys know about CV. Uh, I'm sure many security engineers in the room, so I'm expecting like two, three CVs here and there. Okay, I can't see you guys anyways. There, there you go. So, uh, okay, so CV stands for Common Vulnerability Exposure. So if you find a vulnerability in a product, open source product, or any software, you can report it to CV Mitra and they'll be issuing you a CV for that. That's like you have reported that vulnerability. A little bit about me, security engineer working at Flipkart in India. It's an e-commerce company. Prior experience of pen testing and uh, likes to do bug, bug bounty hunting. Actually, should have been, was doing bug, bug bounty hunting because now that I'm a bit lazy, I've stopped it. But I like, like the dollars which come in for that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, loves coding in Python. Member of null security community in Goa. In the, it's, it's one of the biggest communities in India, so I'm part of it. And a little bit of singing from my side, lead, lead vocalist at Sati the band. That's how I look. Okay, what's the tale about? So the tale is about WordPress security ecosystem, how we actually, you know, analyze the whole WordPress security. Everybody you can see on, if you go on SlideShare and Google, you can search about WordPress security. You'll find a lot of presentation people have uh, talked about on how you harden a WordPress default system. Okay. So uh, for people who don't know WordPress, WordPress is a CMS, Content Management System. You can, uh, you can host your own website. One sec. How many people are actually having WordPress site? Great. Two. Amazing. So you guys will enjoy it. So, uh, <laughs> so it's about how we analyze the whole WordPress security ecosystem. And we managed to find issues, like 100 issues in various, various you know, areas of WordPress. What exactly it is, we'll talk about in a minute. So WordPress, 60 million websites in the world. Lot. And Matt says, who's the founder of it, powers one out of every five websites in the world. That's like huge. The current stable version is 3.91 core. And uh, actually, it was released this month, May 8th. And if you see the 3.8 3 downloads were more than 20 million. These are a few stats from Wikipedia. So, okay, talking about the WordPress ecosystem. So what exactly, you know, we'll be looking into will be how we have found out vulnerabilities in various plugins and themes, okay? So this small picture always says many WordPress, WordPress uh, site, site administrators will actually just install a default, admi uh, default system on their, on their box and uh, you know, they just forget about security. They don't bother. That actually says grass is always green on the other side of the ecosystem. So why bother? Okay. Look at this. You have numbers like 15,000, 162,000 WordPress sites used in a DDoS attack. So 45,000 WordPress blocks hacked in second day of spam campaign. So these, these, these are not like smaller numbers, like huge numbers, right? And you might be knowing about the XML RPC ping back vulnerability or, you know, the frame injections or so many vulnerabilities I can name in WordPress installations. And the, the funny part is, if you find one single vulnerability in the core, that's the 3.9 core, you have a number of 60 million websites on the planet. So it's like so many websites. So if this picture was not scary enough, does this scare you? <laughs> okay, we, we, we criticize him a lot, but he's a good singer. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. So the WordPress ecosystem consists of WordPress core, as I said, 31,154 plugins and more than 2,500 themes. Okay, so that's a huge number, right? 31,000 themes, plugins, sorry, and 2,500 themes. So this was our attempt to improvise the ecosystem, what things we did, actually. So the story starts here. Once upon a time. Okay, I would like to credit my friend Anand Srivastava, who's also simultaneously working on the project with me. And uh, this was the plugin that he, that he actually 
used in one of his installations. He runs a uh, WordPress site. The name of the plugin is Portable My PHP MyAdmin. What it actually does is it allows users to access PHP MyAdmin section directly from the dashboard. So you just have to install this plugin on your WordPress site. It gives you the console of PHP MyAdmin. But poor guy, he installed it. He wanted to, you know, make things easier. Something went wrong. So he's also a security engineer, and his instincts actually gave him these vulnerabilities. They were full path disclosures, PHP info disclosures, and the biggest one, security bypass allowed direct access. So if you just go on these links, actually, if you just have a WordPress installation and you can just go to those links, it actually gives you full access to the features of the SQL window. It's like you have a SQL window, you can run queries, SQL queries on it. And the worst part, you don't require authentication. Uh, the scary part was there were like 11,000 websites running <laughs> online. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's about it. And the, it, it actually bypasses author, uh, authorization because it, it picks up user ID and the password from the config file, wp-config file, OK? So this is what we did. Actually, he did. He contacted the author somewhere in July. The author was saying, OK, I'll, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it. Wasted around two months, two, three months. Then he contacted the WordPress security team in September. And it was, the plugin was disabled in October. So that's the best part. If you, if you find any uh, issue in the plugin or theme, you can contact the author first. You can tell him, this is the disclosure I want to do. Fix it. People are getting you know, affected. If he doesn't respond, the best way is you can you can con contact the WordPress team. They'll fix it for you. Or they'll just disable the plugin in the repository. OK? End result. Plugin closed, CV issued. That's the sec list uh, you know, conversation. You can uh, go there, check it out. So this actually started our project, Code Vigilant. I have one surprise for you at the end of the presentation. Uh, this was not actually planned, but we have codevigilant.com online today morning. And all the issues and uh, whatever disclosures we have done, we, we will be able to find it on the website. So, so what, what's, what's, the, what's the point of Code Vigilant? We have, we have to spot new issues in plugins and themes, report them to the relevant author, get it patched, or close the plugin or theme. Okay? That's the basic idea of Code Vigilant. What is required to, you know, to run this project? You just require just three things, Apache, SQL, PHP, and Python 2.7. This was our approach, which was a little idiotic. So we installed the latest version of WordPress, downloaded all these 31,000 plugins, downloaded all themes. Have you all downloaded any plugin on your website? Yours is clean, huh? OK, smart man. So uh, the thing is, if you want to download any plugin on your website, you go to your WordPress installation, and in that search bar, you'll type the name of the plugin, and you download it. But if you want to download it, all, all 31,000 themes, how are you going to do it? OK, the answer is simple. So uh, we have the sites, themes.spn.wordpress.org. This is for the themes. And you'll have all the 2,500 20, themes in that. You can actually go for plugins as well, plugins.svn.wordpress.org, you'll find all 31,000 themes. Now it's simple, right? You just write one simple Python script, that's what we did, and download it on your local box. OK? So the script is pretty simple. We have just used request and beautiful soup, rest everything is what. So now what? We have 31,000 plugins on our box and 2,500 themes and the latest version of WordPress running, obviously. Find zero days. Find issues, OK? So started with the man manual approach, which is the most idiotic approach that we have thought of. Analyze plugin, each plugin, see the source code, understand the logic, what it does, find issues, and report, OK? Slow results. We had a few here and there, like 10 XSS, 9. L using components with known vulnerabilities, one LFI and one auth bypass, but it took like two weeks to find all these because we were trying to analyze each and every plugin, see the functionality, how it works, see the flow, and then find issues. It took a lot of time. Okay. Don't know this guy. 
How many of you all watched Game of Thrones? Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> like a Venn diagram in the middle, man. <laughs> okay. So let's automate everything. That was a sec the second approach that we applied, and we were quite successful. Okay. Started with XSS. Everybody knows. Everybody's favorite. Oh God, it doesn't. Okay, it doesn't look like. Okay, this was this one of the scripts that we wrote in Python. Simple logic. It finds all the get uh, parameters. Dollar underscore get replaces their value with this magical thing. Whatever it does, it just pops up a document cookie. Okay, and sends the request with the proper URL structure and checks if the same check string is present in the response. OK, I actually wanted to show you this, but it's, the resolution is shitty. OK, anyways. Uh, used again, response, URL lib2, and beautiful soup, I guess. OK, so uh, all these, uh, all these uh, scripts will be online on the website. You guys can have a look. And guess what? More than 100 valid XSS. That's it. You just run the script on once. What that script does is it will go through all those 31,000 plugins, each and every file, open it, find the get parameter, find you know if there are vulnerable, shoot it out in the uh, browser and check if it's vulnerable. And uh, the bonus was testing for XSS, we stumbled upon a few other issues like SSRF, LFI, and uh, URL redirects. There was like a bonus we didn't expect that, but uh, great. We we had uh, good issues, number of issues there. And uh, yeah, even we kept WordPress busy a lot. The guy who was actually the point of contact for us was very, very yelling at us, kind of. Okay, this was the stats for the next three weeks. Cross-site scripting, 211. Actually, uh, when I applied for confidence, we had just like 110 issues, but now in three weeks, we have more. And uh, current st stats will be, will we'll have uh, released in the second phase of it. This is just the f first phase of code vigilant, what we have uh, done. And we are planning a lot more in the second phase. So you can see the stats. It's, it's actually good to see. Look at, look at this. Oh, yeah, the best part. 70% were closed. We reported to the authors. We reported to uh, WordPress. WordPress was uh, the second option, but authors didn't respond to a few of our uh, queries. When then the second option was go to WordPress plugin, and they responded. They closed it in the plugin repository. So all those plugins that we have reported, we won't you won't be finding it in the WordPress repository section. Okay. Few of our duplicates here and there, earlier reported by someone else. That's how codevigilant.com looks. We have uh, the disclosure section. RSS home feed is not working currently. You can, if you guys have systems, then just open up codevigilant. You'll be able to see that. And uh, yeah, currently we have like uh, 70 different issues in the word disclosure sec section we have, we have open. And by next week start, I think all 267 issues will be online. You can have a look. OK, the future for Code Vigilant. We just started with WordPress, but uh, now we have automation. We want to have automation frameworks for other vulnerabilities like uh, SQL or LFI, we don't have currently. We're working on it. We've made some good progress. And uh, explore other platforms like Drupal and Joomla. And of course, en encourage external researchers to contribute. So that's that's a main area we'll be looking into. We would want other researchers to help us, you know, fine tuning. Uh, there are there are currently many scripts that we have written. Most of us, mo most of them require some fine tuning, and uh, norm currently they are all private Bitbucket repository, and uh, we are looking for other external researchers to help us in doing that. So another uh, week or so, it will be online on Code Vigilant. That's 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 my friend, Anant. So he, if you can, if you guys want to, you know, actually contribute, you can just put me a mail or Anant drop. Uh, Twitter message, we can help you guys on that. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I always use that. <laughs> okay, uh, no questions, then let me just give you a look. 
a small uh, point which probably I might have missed. So many, many people ask me, well, like, if plugin installing plugins and themes, you'll find so many issues, then why do trust wa WordPress? WordPress in itself, the code is very stable, the team is very active, they respond to issues very fast, and it's very tough, trust me, to find an issue in WordPress core, okay? So you have plugins and themes to just, you know, help you in beautifying your WordPress site or whatever, but uh, make sure whenever you install a plugin or a theme, those themes and plugins are from trusted sources. When I mean trusted sources, don't go for the paid ones. It doesn't mean that they are trusted. Just that people who actually respond to the uh, support section, there is, whenever you install, there is a support section which actually says the author is active. If any vulnerability is found in that section, the author will respond and he'll fix it. Some people just put the plugin online, they don't bother, they're like done. So make sure such things are taken care of. Themes, I would just go suggest the default theme. 2012, 2013, they are good, okay? And yeah, be safe, you use WordPress, it's all good, I like it, thank you.